Hello and welcome to the second video of the series where we aim to prove the existence of Euler's number. In today's video we're going to be uh, defining the least upper, brown, upper bound property of R, which is the set of all real numbers. And uh, then we're also going to be asserting a theorem, which if we have time we'll prove in this video, using the least upper bound property of the real numbers. So what is the least upper bound property of the real numbers? Well, let's begin by just stating what it is. So the statement hopefully is not too complicated. It says that if E is a subset of the real numbers and E is bounded above then a least upper bound of E exists. So there is some jargon in this statement that we should clarify before we continue. First of all, what does bounded above mean? Basically if we have a set of real numbers, a subset of the real line, so perhaps if this is the real line, we have, we can say this is the subset over here, so it's uh, all numbers less than maybe this. Let's say this number is five. So all numbers less than five is definitely a subset of uh, of the real line. So what does bounded above mean? Bounded above just means that we can find a number that's greater than all numbers in our set. This is definitely possible with uh, this subset, the real numbers, because we define the subset of the real numbers as all numbers less than 5, in which case 5 itself is an upper bound of this set, and actually 5 is also what we call the least upper bound of this set. So now we know what bounded above means. It just means that we can find some number that is greater than all the numbers in our set. What does the least upper bound mean? So a least upper bound is just an upper bound. It's an upper bound of E, so this is the least upper bound, it's a definition. So it's an upper bound of E that is less than or equal to all other upper bounds of E. Alright, so hopefully that makes sense. It's just uh, it's the smallest upper bound. It's the upper bound of E that is less than or equal to all other upper bounds of E. Alright, so this property is actually true for the real numbers. That is, if we do have a subset of the real numbers, which is bounded above, then there exists a number that is the least upper bound of this subset. We're not going to actually prove this statement in today's video, but it involves, the proof basically is uh, a construction of the real numbers, which just means that we produce the set of all real numbers using techniques which ensure that the least upper bound property of the real numbers is true. But we're, we're going to be uh, assuming this statement in this series of videos. Okay, so now that we've stated the least upper bound property, we're going to look at monotone sequences. Monotone sequences. So we've already um, shown what the limit of a sequence means in the previous video. Today we're going to discuss the limit of monotone sequences. So quite simply, a monotone sequence is a sequence that is strictly increasing or strictly decreasing. So for instance we could have what's called a monotone increasing sequence. A monotone increasing sequence. 
So what this means is, if uh, again S n is our sequence, then S n is always less than or equal to S n plus one. In other words, the next term of the sequence is always greater or equal to the previous term of the sequence. Uh, obviously, this means that a sequence that is constant is also monotone increasing. But also, a sequence that looks like this is also monotone increasing. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, monotone decreasing sequence, uh, you may have already guessed the definition, is very similar. For monotone decreasing sequence, the next term of the sequence is always less than or equal to the previous term of the sequence. So an example, again, would be a constant sequence. A constant sequence is both monotone decreasing and monotone increasing. But of course, it also includes sequences like this, which are genuinely getting smaller as terms progress. So that's, that, that's what a monotone sequence is. So what does this have to do with the limit of a sequence? Well, monotone sequences have a lot to do with the limit of a sequence. Um, there's actually a theorem which we're going to prove in this video if we have time, but first we're just going to state it. It's called the monotone convergence theorem, if I'm not mistaken. Monotone convergence theorem. And it states that if Xn is a monotone sequence and Xn is also bounded above or below. This depends on whether Xn is increasing or decreasing. So if xn is increasing and xn is bounded above, then this theorem holds. And if xn is decreasing and xn is also bounded below, then this theorem also holds. So what does the theorem say? Well, it says if xn fulfills these conditions, then xn converges to some real number. So it seems like quite a profound statement. But you can think of it as the equivalent of a sequence that is sort of running into an obstacle and is forced to crash into that obstacle. So if we have a real number line like this and we have a sequence, let's say this sequence is increasing and it's bounded by this number over here, let's say it's bounded by 4 or something, then even though the sequence is increasing, so this is the first term of the sequence, the second term of the sequence, eventually the, the sequence can't exceed this number. It can't exceed this number. So in some way, you can think of it as a sequence that has to crash into something. It has, it has nowhere to go anymore, so it has to sort of crash into something. Okay? But we're going to prove it more precisely right now. Okay. So first we're going to prove it for a uh, monotone increasing sequence. So a monotone increasing sequence. All right. Oops, and hopefully the proof will be enough because the proof for the monotone decreasing sequence is almost the same thing. Okay, so let's say um, Sn is bounded above by some number, let's say b in R, and Sn is monotone increasing. All right. Now, we're going to use the least upper bound property here. Let's consider the set of Sn for all n in the natural numbers. In other words, we're just going to consider the set which contains all elements of the sequence. Now, S is clearly bounded above, bounded above, by b as per our hypothesis. So by the least upper bound property there exists a number which is equal to 
the supremum of s. The supremum of s is just basically, it just means the least upper bound of s. So this is exactly uh, as per the least upper bound property of the real numbers. And in fact, this sequence is going to converge to the supremum of s. And we can show that this is true. All right, so we're going to prove that our sequence actually converges to the supremum. So from the first video, remember the definition of convergence of a sequence to a limit. So in other words, we want to prove the truth value. We want to prove that this statement is true. The statement is for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a big N such that if N is greater than big N, then the distance between um, Sn and the supremum of S can be made less than epsilon for any epsilon greater than zero. Now suppose this isn't true. Then there's some number, some epsilon one greater than zero, such that for no matter what terms of the sequence you take, so no matter what terms of the sequence you take, the distance between um, the terms of our sequence and the supremum can never be made less than epsilon one. In other, in other words, the distance between the terms of our sequence and the supremum is always greater or equal to epsilon one for all terms of our sequence. Now, obviously, the supremum of s is always greater than the terms of our sequence, so the distance between the, uh, our, our, the terms of our sequence and the supremum of s is simply the supremum of s subtract sn. Now, this is always greater or equal to epsilon 1. So if we just rearrange that inequality, so if we just rearrange the inequality I'm circling in red right now, which must be true if our, for some epsilon 1, if our sequence doesn't converge uh, to supremum s, then the terms of our sequence are always less than or equal to supremum s minus some positive number. Now, this is actually impossible because by definition, supremum s is the least upper bound of s. However, what this means is every, every uh, element in our set s, so every term of our sequence is less than or equal to supremum s, which is supposed to be the least upper bound of our sequence, minus some positive real number epsilon 1. Now, that means supremum s is not, in fact, the least upper bound of s. So this is impossible, which means that, in fact, there cannot exist any positive number which we can't make our sequence um, we can't make the distance between our sequence and its limit as cl as close as close to. So there does not exist any epsilon one such that the distance between um, the terms of our sequence and the supremum of s is greater or equal to epsilon one. It doesn't exist, which means that our sequence must converge to supremum s. So that's the proof of the uh, of what's called a monotone convergence sequence. Uh, sorry, monotone convergence theorem, at least for monotone increasing sequences. Now we're going to use this to prove the existence of. Thanks for watching.